Well, welcome to a special edition of Experts at EWU. And you're going to see our guest again. I think this is about the third time that you've been on. Scott Finney, who is the director of Africana Studies out at EWU. And one thing I will say uh, as a preface to all of this is we've had the opportunity to have a number of professors on. Mm. And I am absolutely impressed with the caliber of instructors and professors at EWU. Thank you. Honestly. Thank you. Thank and you. of you particularly, because I've learned a lot from you. Uh, and they were just asking as we started to load this program that how long are you going to go? And I, well, normally we go about 15 minutes maybe or so. But my chat with you always is so interesting that we can't keep it to that. That's really true. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. And so, uh, my favorite interview of anybody in the last year mm. was our last conversation that we had that. because we really got to talk about things yeah. that I think others out there are experiencing too. Yeah, I really and so, so. Um, thanks for coming back. Yeah, thanks okay? for having me. You're and uh, how yeah. are you doing with all that's going on? I know there's yeah. so much and yeah. everything's changing all the time. Yeah, but what you uh, know today is going to be different tomorrow. Exactly. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so, you know, I've gotten used to it now. It's more of a, a challenge of staying in touch with students the best yes. you can. Yes. And planning for a, a better future. Mm -hmm. But w that thing of uncertainty keeps haunting us. So that's, yeah. that's, that's so true. That yeah. really is so true. Yeah. Well, what we want to focus on today is the annual trip that you have done for a thousand mile civil rights tour. Yeah. Okay. And can't do it this year. Nope. Nope. Yeah. For obvious reasons. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But you're looking for next year. Sure. Okay. Are and for you've it. had a big request from folks to yeah. go. Yeah. So I'm not sure how you're going to handle that, but yeah. deal with it then, right? Mm -hmm. exactly. What a nice problem to have. Um, Let's do this. Hmm. Let's take a look at the video that you and EWU did on okay. a recent tour. What okay. year was that? Yeah, that was actually just last spring quarter. Okay. Of not. Of 2019. 2019. 2019. Yes, yeah. okay. So it's yeah. as recent as, as can be. That's right. Uh, yeah. I want folks to see like I have the experience and, the, and, and hear from the students mm -hmm. and, and their experience of that. And then let's come back and analyze that and talk mm -hmm. about that. So, We'd love to. All right. Let's do it. It was surreal um, to be walking where MLK had been, walking across the Edmund Pettus Bridge. To look down and see where Bloody Sunday happened, where that massacre happened. It just kind of like, it, it was emotional and I felt sad, but also hopeful. When I initially arrived to the Deep South, um, I saw people who looked like me more than I thought. Even getting off the plane in Atlanta, seeing all the people of color, the black people in, in positions of power. I saw people who resembled me more than I thought, and that was kind of a cool experience because I got to see the potential that I hold. We actually touched the ground, the soil. We went to Martin Luther King's house. We touched the ground that he used to play on when he was little. There were a lot of things that I saw when I went on this trip that I had never even realized were a possibility in our history. There is no way to truly prepare for this trip, emotionally, physically, and mentally. There's no way. When I went there, um, a big part of my experience was feeling like, oh man, I should have been, I should have been there during that time. Looking at my peers on the trip, I saw, you know, dry eyes. I saw lots of weary eyes that saw pain that they never thought they would see before. The phrase I just kept hearing in my head the whole time I was there was, if not me, then who? They had a little shoe of the little girls where she, she was wearing that shoe when she was killed. And it was just like, wow, these little girls sacrificed their life for something that we could be here for today. I need to get somewhere where 
I can actually learn my history and I can actually, I guess, find myself so I can help others like that look just like me find themselves. When I saw the names and the unknown names of the people that were lynched in the Deep South, I thought of my grandfather who fled from lynching violence to move to New Jersey to start a new life. And they knew that people were just going to go to jail, ruin their records, and leave their families for this cause. And it just put into perspective that, like, you know, they knew that people were going to die for this cause. This really happened, and, like, the textbooks are just, they're pages, but going there is just like, wow, okay, this, this is real now. Well, as you could see, the students were greatly impressed and it's just as what we had hoped for when it comes to vision and purpose of this project. Really, the gift of sacrifice that was made available by the 1950s and 1960s civil rights activists left us a national treasure. And each landmark in the Deep South, we were able to open up that treasure chest and actually see students before our own eyes go through a metamorphosis in relation to a kind of ability to recreate, to uh, kind of imagine and dream, and maybe even seeing themselves as empowered agents of change. And so what this trip did was unlock that potential. And what it did, as it was said before by one of the students, clearly, if not me, then who? And uh, I really appreciate those kind of statements. And as our last student just mentioned, History was just on the books before, but now it's become real. And that's the value of this project. We were able to, in a sense, turn something cold, historical and distant of the past, and make it an emotive and present reality. And we hope this trip is just the first of many more to come. We need your help to continue this impactful, life-changing program. Please contact the EW Foundation to help fund future trips for our Eastern students. Wow, it doesn't get much more powerful than that, right? I agree. Yeah. You mentioned some of what was going on and so forth. What kind of personal things did folks, folks, students say to you mm -hmm. after that mm -hmm. and during that, yeah, that yeah. tour? Yeah, their, their inquiry to me was, how can we get this out to people? Yeah. Because I'm so impacted, and yet the majority of the people never even heard of it, let alone let it leave an impression. Right. So their concern was how to propagate this. Well, I mean, and you think about the population today, most of the population was not alive then, okay? Exactly. I was much younger, okay, yeah. 50 years ago, mm -hmm. all right? Um, I remember, remember those things. Mm -hmm. I remember Martin Luther King being shot. I remember Bobby Kennedy. That was my first election. In those days, you had to be 21. That's okay, right. that's right. And I, I voted for him, and someone called me that night to, mm -hmm. to say your candidate was just shot. Mm -hmm. And I'm going, what? Because I had gone. My wife and I had gone to bed, going, okay, in Los Angeles, sure. of course, and, yeah. and things look good. But we don't, we don't really understand our history. And white folks don't understand black history at all, mm -hmm. basically, okay? Mm -hmm. But what pointed out was that some of the blacks in there mm -hmm. learned a heck of a lot yeah. by being there. Right. By being there generates that interest, I That's think, right? right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it kind of sparks a fire that lectures, even good films, yes, uh, and, and ex excellent books and biographies can kind of leave a, uh, a waning yeah. of, but what does that mean for me? But once they're thrust and immersed into that kind of a yeah. setting, it creates a thing of, like it was said, what, do I, what can I do now? It's, yeah. it's, I want to be, if I'm going to go into physics, I want to be a change agent in that arena of yes. physics. Yeah. Now they see it as an all-encompassing yeah. calling, even. Part of their DNA. Yeah, yep. that's Literally. exactly it. Literally, yep. yeah. Marvelous. Um, we talked before we started this program of the whole issue today um, on all sides, 
because we're in such a political t- few months here, right? Mm, yep. But all sides, we don't honor or understand or maybe even teach some of our real history. Mm-hmm. And you can see that, at least I see that, from tearing down statues and so forth, um, which to me could be a point of an opportunity to explain something and to teach. Right. This is why he's honored in this part of the country. Mm -hmm. This is what people were like then, Mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Have we improved since then? Yes, but we still have a a work in progress. And I mentioned to my friend who's uh, left Iran to go to Turkey. um, Oh, yeah. uh, You know, 2,500-year history, and we're, what, around 250 years here of the United States. We're still an infant, Mm -hmm. okay? Mm We're not out of the baby bassinet yet. We're learning. Exactly. Did we make mistakes? Absolutely. Right. But we're within a framework that I think has the greatest opportunity for all. We just got to make it work. Got to make it work. And yeah. I think the key, the students need to hear a broader narrative. Yes. Uh, if you're going to leave a statue up of someone that maybe even started the KKK, right. have a plaque next to it Yes. that defines the more humane approach and also gives the context of what he was doing yes. as, as the starter of such a terrorist organization right, right. in the name of patriotism. But I think what's key is that students need to be given a chance to critically think. Yes. And you can only do that on a fully informed basis. Yeah. And yeah. so, yeah, there's so much uh, contention over what to do about names and statues. I think the key is to give students a broader narrative and let them reach their own conclusions. And I think students want that. They rather would have that than just be told information yeah. about dates and geography. Right. They want to know about human interaction. Because yeah, I don't remember any of the exactly. dates, okay? Exactly, yeah. And yeah. they want to be able to say, okay, what's happening today yeah. with the Jacob Blake, for instance, murder? When I'm not murder, but shooting. Yes. When you when you consider that, what's the umbilical cord that historically is related to that? Yes. Because here is an episode of tragic outcome. Yes. But What's the fuller story behind it? So I think whether it's something as tragic and as, I would say, um, hurtful to see and hear, yeah. uh, I think students can respond to that, n- that negative response and that kind of painful response right. with, okay, give me a fuller horizon of yeah. what just happened. Do you think some of that's sometimes today the media that doesn't really... that? It jumps to conclusions. Yeah, there's a rush okay. to judgment. There is, on um, all sides. On but, all sides, but yeah, there's a rush to judgment. And I think part of it is who can ever get out there with a slogan or a kind of a word yep, to yep. spin something. The, the truth is, I always tell my students, you can hear one, one group say something. Yes. Don't buy that wholeheartedly. Back up, check out the context, even check out who's saying and how they're reporting. Yeah, is it reliable? Is it reliable? And also check out what's the motive. Is it really to inform Mm -hmm. uh, or is it to present all protest as something negative? Whereas Dr. King said he would never be involved in a riot, but a riot is is the voice of the unheard. Mm -hmm. And so what is it that makes people so unheard that they go to that extent Mm -hmm. of rioting? So I I think this this recent shooting uh, stirs up again that whole thought. What is the truth, but more so, what is the historical truth? And is this a a rare symptom, or is there a pattern? And what can we do to open it up, Mm -hmm. uh, admit it, and move on positively, including everyone, not excluding anyone? Mm -hmm. Exclusion doesn't work. We learned that through 225 years of slavery and 345 years of racial segregation. So we're not going to fight fire with fire. But we have to be able to have an exchange yes. and an opening and even an admittance of I need, like you said, I need. I'm still a student of history myself. I want to learn more and know more mm-hmm. for the sake of interaction and mm-hmm. the quality of interaction. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and I know I've told you this before. I'm more of a student of history and learning now than I was back in high school and college. Mm-hmm. Sure. And I mentioned that to other folks that are close to my age and they go in fact I did today on the phone to somebody and their uh, quick reply was a Mike I can use his name but without his last name he mm-hmm. said aren't we all and that really is true right. but it seems to me that we're missing a generation that just in some ways doesn't get it mm-hmm. 
Is it that they haven't been taught? Has it that they've maybe been taught wrong? I mean, I know what you do out on the campus and your staff and, and so forth, and you're addressing these these issues, mm -hmm. but not everyone's gonna go through your program, right? okay? Right. Right. So how do we get the true history and the mini version of what you do mm -hmm. in our regular history classes? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think one of the biggest things I found extremely valuable is to insert biographies, autobiographies, okay, and to give this you know, first-hand report yeah. of what individuals are going through, or even one individual, and allow the class, the students, to extrapolate. And what does that tell you about society? If Barbara Jordan went through this experience, if Shirley Chisholm is the first female as well as the first African to pursue presidential candidacy, right. what kind of things were going on? Even Harry, Henry Aaron hitting that home run, that 715, what did he experience? Why yeah. was he fighting some of the same fights that in 1947 Jackie Robinson was fighting? So it's those private personal biographies, photos, court records, letters, memoirs that can open up a personalized flavor. And it'll, it'll start a spark in, in people. We need to spend more time at the library then. Yeah, we do, we yeah. do. And, yeah. and as educators, we need to put a thirst and an appetite, yeah. even an increased appetite and capacity yeah. for students to want to go find yes. information for themselves. Yeah. And not wait till yeah. you're in your 70s. That's right. There yeah. you go. Yeah. Yeah. Or wait for it to come across your smartphone and, oh, I know. and buy it from whatever I know. source that I, it comes I from. I know. And welcome to today. And there's so much of that. And, yeah. and, and unfortunately, in so many ways, the first story out yeah. is what everyone remembers, even yeah. if it's corrected later. Yeah. I mean, have you seen a newspaper yet that does a headline on the I, on the front page of something and it's wrong, mm -hmm. where's their retraction and correction? It's not on the front page in the same right. uh, font size, right? That's we really know true. that. That's really and, true. And unfortunately, you can't pull things back mm -hmm. and so forth, so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's what I loved about this tour. Our, my, our vision, yes. my vision was, how can we bring students into the arena of ownership about yes. history? And uh, I've learned uh, they're very much triggered by, like I said, biographies, by footage and documentaries. But I just felt, can they become eyewitnesses? Yeah. And what would that do? And so our thought was, how can we generate some interest in this area? And as soon as we mentioned it, the responses came from really? all angles. Right. Yeah. And so last spring, or spring of 2019, we were able to bring 15 young people. Uh, and actually, we took them on a 10-week course first okay yeah, good and good for about good. two and a half hours once a week wow they got to see footage and they got to here's the key right in their own diary their responses and their impressions okay so they saw the Edmund Pettus Bridge they saw where Margaret Evers was assassinated they saw Dr. King at, at age 26 speaking at the but uh, right. Montgomery bus boycott and then when they went there the, you, you should have seen it. It was a... <laughs> I can were, only imagine. They were being written on. Yeah. And here's the thing. We had to debrief each night, and then they had to write again in their diaries oh boy. their impressions. You made them work. Oh, we made them work. Good. Because it, it was you know, an upper division course. Sure. They got five credits. But what, what that did was it incorporated yeah. what they saw and what they felt, and it made them put it down with the thought of conveying that eventually. Yes. to other people yes and part of the requirement for the class was to come back to the campus and present to classes and to the campus wow. their story yeah from doing all of that what response did you get from the students it was uh, overwhelming okay uh, the whole question was can I go when is the next time uh, of course I mean just yeah. outstanding and then of course staff and faculty even a number of administrators oh, good. were hoping to come and then parents said can I come or can I bring my younger son to go with my older son? It was, a, I think, an opening of yes. a lot of potential to make history relative and then to actually use it as a momentum to give dignity to individuals to present themselves for change, no matter what their career is, mm -hmm. no matter what their profession mm -hmm. would be. And so to me, it's, it's drawing, like I mentioned in the tape, it's drawing from a national treasure that we haven't written checks from. But mm -hmm. I, I think these tours are great opportunities to do that. COVID, of course, wiped it out yeah, this time. Yeah. You know, we had 15 students last time, the first time, in three different minivans, driven by three of us host adults. 
This time we had 42 students signed up. For, we, for this last for this, spring? For this last spring that never took place with a charter bus was reserved okay. so that we could all go as a large group. So you got a backlog places. and then in 21. Yeah. 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 So it's coming up. It's coming up. How many up. do you think you'll, will you, you know, cut it off at some yeah, point? Yeah, I think we will. Almost I think we have will. to, don't yeah, you? Yeah, we probably have to. You, yeah. you probably use 50 as the high point. But what we do is we go to five different states during spring break. Okay. And in seven days, we make 23 stops. And we fly into Atlanta and spend two and a half days there because there's so many museums and Dr. King's home. Yes. Then we drive down to Montgomery, Alabama. We go up to Selma. Then we go down to New Orleans. Then over to Jackson, Mississippi, up to uh, the place where Dr. King was killed, Memphis, Tennessee. Yes. Down to Birmingham and back to Atlanta in, in seven days. As you talk about all of that, <laughs> what's flashing through my mind is history. Yep. Okay. Yep. Because I yep. was in my 20s mm -hmm. back then, okay? Mm -hmm. And I'm going, wow, I remember all those names and places and some of the things that went on, not everything. Sure. Um, but I'm going, wow, that would be really interesting to, to learn. Yes. How can we apply what we've learned and what you teach out there to what's going on today? What advice mm. and counsel do you have? I, I look to people like you that... Mm -hmm. You get the big picture. Mm -hmm. You've lived the picture. Thank you. I'm not black, in case you hadn't noticed. Mm -hmm. I haven't had to live a life <laughs> sure. like you, okay? Sure. sure. And so I'm curious, what can, what can uh, we white boys do, mm -hmm. and, and what we should, should we do, and what can blacks do mm -hmm. to bring this together right now? Yeah, yeah, no, I appreciate And that question is something students are always I'll you know, bet. kind of thirsting for to get an answer. I believe the top, top quality to what, which I mean fulfill the role of a servant leader yes. regardless of race okay. or ethnicity right. is the ability to listen and to understand that hearing does not require that much of you because a lot of times when we're in the process of hearing we're cooking up what we're about to say yes, yes. but listening demands that you drop your perspective mm -hmm. and I have to uh, feel that this is something we rarely do because when you drop your perspective you're saying I want to validate your lived experiences mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. authentic mm -hmm. and even legitimate, although they're not found in my database. And I yes. believe as a team from all backgrounds, all cultures, we could come together and actually reverse even systemic, institutionalized, faceless racism. Gosh, that would be nice. Wouldn't that be marvelous? Yes. But we have to do it on a grassroots level yeah. and on a one-to-one -one level and on a level of I'm willing to listen because I value you. Yes. You know, one of the big things about the protest, which, you know, the majority of them are nonviolent. Of course, they get taken hostage and yeah. all yeah. kinds of Well, well when ugly, you talk about protest versus riots, right. they're two different things. things right. okay. All kind of other things come out. Yeah. But I think what they're just saying is, as Dr. King said, every protest should be with one goal to raise awareness, yeah. to raise consciousness for dialogue. Educate. Yep, yep. And I tell you, I've been thinking about this. Uh, the Inlander interviewed me today and asked me about education and what can be done along the same line. And I, I kind of believe that we need a department of reconciliation, equity, and sustainability that's on the same level as the, of the Department of Education, Department of whatever we may have there. We need a secretary who oversees for the whole nation mm -hmm. and lets the local folks respond mm -hmm. and be accountable. But help support that. Help support that, right. give the funding, and be able to deal with the issues of reconciliation, equity, and this idea of sustainability, where we wouldn't need affirmative action if yeah. we really did make it apples to apples yes. for those in downtown Detroit mm -hmm. and those on the south hill of Spokane, mm -hmm. K through 12 education. But that also means in the area of employment, we'd have to have some oversight. Mm -hmm. are, are the old relics and the old vestiges of s a supremacy still mm -hmm. making the final decision? Is it the good old boy system? Or is it really we want what's best for our clients to serve the public? And we don't care what color. We don't care what your background is. Mm -hmm. And I think had we had a Department of Reconciliation, much like what uh, uh, President Mandela did with South Africa, mm -hmm to oversee that and to add in equity and to add in sustainability. Had we had that in 1865 mm -hmm. when the mm -hmm. Civil War finally ended, 
I don't think we would have needed reconstruction to fail in its 12 years of experiment. Wow. And we surely wouldn't have had the, I would say, sad, tragic history of, like John Lewis recently said yes. before he died, the war ended in 1865, but the right to vote wasn't granted until 1965 for 75% of African Americans in the South. Yeah. See, that shows us it took 100 years after freedom yeah. without a Department of Reconciliation, Equity and right. Sustainability. And I think that could apply to the areas of education, like what you mentioned, employment, uh, even in the area of sports, management, coaches, all the things that are going on now. Right. And law enforcement. When I think of law enforcement, uh, I just joined, uh, uh, I'm a board member of a group called uh, Police Evolution. Okay. And we uh, are headquartered uh, really out of not D.C., but also in Coeur d'Alene. Okay. I work with a uh, state patrol uh, captain there. And we're trying to provide free training, free open discussion with all law enforcement agencies with the view of this. You're here to serve the public, and most of you come here with this idea. I want to do my job and see my family, go back home and, and live a family life. Yes. So what can we do to rid the reputation or even the citations right. that have blown up recently and blown up recently? How can we get back to this idea of, as a police officer, I really don't need to be an expert social, social worker. I really don't need to be a psychologist. I really don't. You know, there's a lot of demands on officers. Yes. Can we, and when they say defund police, I think what they're saying is, can we change their responsibilities and not put those kind of things on their shoulders? Yeah. Who, who, who is a, a, a drug expert anyway? How do you know right, right. what someone's going through with drugs? Or men so, mental illness or, mental or whatever yeah, it who is. Knows, yeah. yes. So part of the thing I think we need to do is to, yes, go after those that have crossed the line and, and bring in yes. judicial fairness, justice. Absolutely. A lot of it that's been Absolutely. long held back. That's, that's for sure. But the majority of officers, we believe, are open and willing to yeah. What can we do to re, I would say, apply their, their a vital, vital role as, as keepers of the peace? And I think education uh, is a big thing, and I think community knowledge, walking around the, the place that you enforce would make a big difference. But all of this could be under the umbrella of the Department of Reconciliation, Equity. So is that a spot you want? Hey, you never know. Uh, <laughs> all, all depends down the road. <laughs> when you get old. <laughs> there you go. When I get yeah. old and can't move around that much. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. I you always bet. learn something new from you. You bet. Well, thank and I always walk away feeling good about things because we see so much of the negative. Yeah. That's what... Yeah. gets above the fold yeah. that's what makes the five o'clock news yeah. and i understand that yeah. but there are some terrific people out there like you Thank that you. we should all be talking to okay I so i hope through that. this vehicle that people get to know you i hope they'll follow you out at eastern and i'm waiting for that promise that I can sit in your class, yes. maybe in spring or something? I hope so. Okay. Because not for sure fall of 2021. Okay. If not, okay. Okay. All right. I'm All looking right. forward to that. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you for coming again. Thank okay? you. I appreciate and it. And thanks for watching Experts at EWU. Have a good day, everybody.